Hey guys, see this nice cream colored wall behind me? Right next to all this nice dark colored cabinetry, my TV, blah, 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 blah. Dark, 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 light. Stands out like a sore thumb, I hate it. So I decided to do a leather wall. Now I've done this a couple of times over the years, um, mostly with a, a brown color, tan, all natural. This time I went a little crazy. <laughs> Gonna do a red leather wall. So this project looks pretty neat, right? Let's go over what you're gonna need to get it done. All right. Basically, you're gonna need a medium to thin weight craft paper. I bought this on Amazon. I think the whole roll was $12. I have a ton left. I could probably do two small bedrooms with this. And essentially what we're doing is turning that brown craft paper into this, which looks to me like leather. When it's on the wall, it looks like leather. It's pretty great. So in between this and this, um, we're going to paint the paper red, tear it up, crumble it, uncrumble it, and then use a glaze paint mix to paint it and then wipe it clean. So it, it's kind of labor intensive, but it's not hard by any means. It's a little messy. Get some rags. Um, but the other things we're gonna need are, um, you know, a paintbrush or some spongy brushes. Um, I, I originally was using this to use the glaze mixture, but I think I like the spongy brushes better. My glaze mix is simply a can of brown, dark, dark brown paint. You know, any brown will do. If you have a tan, add some black, just get creative latex paint it was an eggshell but i'm not sure and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you're going to mix this two parts of this to one part glaze glaze is an interesting product um it's not easy to find everywhere but they do have it at home depot i bought this uh at martin's i think and it's benjamin moore studio finishes latex glaze 20 dollars at martin's what glaze does is without changing the color of your paint it extends the working time. Your paint takes a lot longer to dry, so you can mess around with it a lot. You are going to mix the brown that makes this red a nice leathery look. Two parts to one part of the glaze. You can use a little more glaze, a little less glaze. It's not gonna change the color of your paint. It's not going to do anything but to make it a little thinner and a little um, easier to work with, and it's going to stay wet longer. Done. I mix it in this. I add a little when I need it. And you need very little. You wipe it on, you wipe it off. You don't need a, a whole a lot of it. Um, the red paint I used, let's see, this is a Benjamin Moore Premium Flat. I used it. It matches the leather sofas I have down there in the room. The reason that I'm doing this red instead of a nice tan. Anyway, I used red this time. I'd never used a bright color before. And it came out awesome. I just love it. Uh, another thing you need is a sponge. Get a big one. Get a really big one. Guys, this was a like $3 car washing sponge. It's not really absorbent. It's a crap sponge, but it's great. Uh, it's, it, it ended up working out much better than I anticipated. It brushes the paint off the top, wipes it onto paper that you have around it, getting it off this and not absorb it. So I'm not washing this sucker all the time. That was awesome. This is a little corner painter, edge painter, trim painter thing. I use this to smooth the paper on the wall. I, I, I really, this was the easiest way to do it. Squeegees can harm the paper when it's wet and a little bit squishy. I, this was much better than I thought it would be. Um, the final thing, and I had to buy this in a huge amount because I bought it online on Amazon. This is Sure Stick Heavy Duty Clay wall covering adhesive. Now, most wall covering adhesives are more liquid than this, and they'll soak this paper and make it go onto the wall very, very flat, very, very nice, but the paint isn't super secure with a really wet wallpaper um, paste. So the clay-based paper is fantastic. It gives you a little bit of working time. It's not too, too messy. It's easy to clean up. 
uh, washes off your stuff pretty well. It's got the texture of, I don't know, sour cream, I guess. We'll open that later because it's hard. Let's get started. There's a lot of steps. It takes, eh, it take me probably two days, three days from start to finish to do um, a small area in my living room. Just painting the first coat on uh, the paper took a long time and a lot of drying space. So you've really got to scale this to the space you've got. But thankfully, you can prepare paper for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and then slam it all up in the same day. You know, it can, uh, it can be a project that you weed out. Um, I actually did half of the wall yesterday and left it sitting. You know, I can finish it today. There's, there's no real rush once you get started. It is time consuming, but it's kind of fun. Your kids can help you with parts of it. And um, let's get going and see what's up next. So the first step of making our leather is laying out our brown wrapping paper here and painting it the base color. And you know, I don't need to be really careful. I don't need to get this really even, blah, blah, blah. I just need to slap it on here. I typically roll out one big sheet. That's what's manageable for me here. Um, if I was doing a whole wall, I'd probably try to find a good place to dry these sheets and move them around and, and paint several at once. Another tip is paint three times as many as you think you're gonna need. It stinks to be halfway through covering the wall and have to stop and make more because, you know, it takes a while for this to dry and for the secondary process to dry. So, um, you want to get right up to the edge because those straight flat edges you're going to use if you have, you know, an edge to the wall, a straight place. All right, so. Flatten that out. Let it dry. Then we'll come back for step two. Stick with me, okay? So it's morning two and I have dried the um, piece of paper that I painted last night. I actually set a couple things underneath of it to lift it up and let airflow get under it because I want it through and through dry. So we'll go on to the next step, which is ripping it up and crumbling it. Now, not something normal to do in the middle of a project, tear it all up again, but that's our next step. So Not being super careful about where I go, and notice there's a lot of um, like brown edges where the top and the bottom of the paper tear off separately. That's great. That's going to give the edge of the piece um, a really nice leathery look, believe it or not, when you do another step down the road. So I just randomly tear this. I tear it into fair size chunks. I can always make it smaller later. If you're doing a really small area, say, you know, backsplash or something, you might want to tear it into really small little chunks. But if you're doing a whole wall or a whole room, that gets tiring really, really fast. So, all right, now you're never going to put a piece shaped like this up on the wall. So, I mentioned earlier, Make a lot more than you think you're going to need. Don't measure out this paper and say, oh, you know, that's how big the wall is, and I'll need this much paper. Double that, maybe triple that, because A, you're wrinkling it up and expanding it again. That takes a little space. Then you're layering it, putting up, making it fit, cutting pieces off that don't fit. So you might as well have some spare. Now, you need a lot of texture to make this look like leather. You're going to be wiping paint in and out of these cracks. So, one by one. 
Rumble them up. And then you flatten them again. So, so I'm going to continue and do this with all these pieces of paper. And we'll be ready for the next step. So here we have a couple of the red pieces that we painted, crumbled, uncrumbled, and are ready to put the glaze on. And what I do first is I put it on some paper. I'm going to want that to absorb some of the paint that I wipe off. I have my paint and glaze mixed here. And I'm going to just slap it on there. And you want to work it into the little grooves that were created when you crumbled the paper. Because that's what's going to create the texture, even though when we put it on the wall, a lot of that texture goes away. All right, so then I tamp it all because I don't want any brush strokes on it. There we have paint, okay? I use the end of the paintbrush to hold this down while I gently wipe paint off. Now this takes about two minutes per piece. Don't, you know, scrub it. You just simply wipe in several different directions. So that you're wiping the paint off the peaks and leaving a lot of it in the valleys. I'm moving around, I'm moving it in different directions, and I'm wiping with this really non-absorbent, like crappy sponge from you know washing the car. It's not picking up any paint. It's wiping it off and sticking it to this paper. All right, so that piece looks adequate to me. And it should dry for at least a couple hours before I want to stick it on the wall. Lay it somewhere flat. All right, so that's how you do that part of it. Let's go over and get some of it on the wall. So we're taking the outlet covers off and the light switch covers off and put down some paper to prep the surface so that I don't make a mess on this. I'm going to be putting the clay-based wallpaper paste on the back of the leather sheets right here um, and climbing up and down to apply the sheets to the wall. All right, so now we open the clay. Ooh, nice and gooey, I need a stick. All right, you can put this on with a paintbrush or you can use a spatula, you can use a myriad of things. Um, lately, my favorite thing has been a spatula. Make sure you get the edges really well. This is a really big spatula compared to what I'm used to using. So let's see how this goes. I don't want this very thick because then that's just more stuff that makes it all texturized underneath with a not good texture. So I get it all the way to the edges. This piece is one of the edge pieces that's a straight cut up the side, so I might as well stick it on the side. I'm just getting that paste on, squeegeeing it with this tape knife, or this, whatever this is. Now, <laughs> the climbing up and down part really sucks. All right. Alright, 
So you have a minute or two to reposition it, move it around, flatten it out. I have a nice rubber squeegee. Let's see how this works. So the important thing is to get this stuck down. If there's a couple of little wrinkles in it, I don't, I don't care. It looks like leather and um, that's why we're using the clay-based wallpaper paste. It's, it's for textured wallpaper so it doesn't mash everything down and soak it and all that. So I'm wiping it down with my hands, just kind of making sure there's no real air bubbles. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the edges and all that right now because I'm going to layer stuff. I'm going to have stuff overlapping this. So um, if I don't like, you know, the way this edge looks too straight or whatever, uh, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to get the next piece and start really rolling. Another thing I bought to wipe it down with are these little like corner painty edgy things. They've got a nice like uh, fleece on this surface and it's it goes over it really nice. So it's another way to save your hands but get this all mashed down well. Perfect. So I have a nice clean surface again. So, I got so excited about getting the last piece up that I angled the camera so you could see, you know, how well I pasted it and then forgot to angle the camera again when I stuck it up here. But here it is. Uh, the wall is done. Earlier today, I covered the switch plate and the outlet cover and stuck them on here. So you can see that pretty well. They're they're looking good. I'm going to go around and, and make sure there's a couple edges that I just need to glue down really well. Um, like this one, it's driving me crazy. If you miss something, you can just get a brown sharpie, touch it up, and then rub it with your finger. Um, not noticeable in the, in the schema of the entire wall. 
So I'm pretty pleased. It's a lot of work. Um, it took, this is two days of doing a lot of sticking stuff to the wall and another two days of a lot of painting, a lot of, um, you know, crumbling mop, ripping up, all that stuff. So it's, you can tell I'm tired, right? Uh, it's time consuming, but it's worth it. I love how it looks. Um, in the morning, I will take a video of how it looks. There's just very little light in this room in the evening, so uh, you can't see a lot of it, but I'm pleased and I can't wait to see how it looks in the morning. Stick with me, thanks.